but there, even though there's no difficult aspects, no problem, he could he could travel when he had to, but he would try and travel to lecture to a group, to a university, in context to somewhere. He didn't just randomly wander. Okay, he traveled to Pali. Now, at the same time, the Mars is well aspected to Jupiter, so it's he could do. He was wanted. He was wanted to be traveled. People would want him to go places. He would have trouble living up to all of his Mars. He would do things, and then he'd be responding to everybody. So much wanting the responsibility to be so many demands made of him, it would be difficult to live up to everyone. As soon as he couldn't live up to every demand on him, his guilt of the sun moon would start bothering him. His sense of self worth would be challenged, and he would get exasperated. But I can't do everything. Interesting puzzle. But the Mars isn't afflicted, it's in the 11th house. The need to do things with others and with a team, be part of a group. It's not really a solo Mars is doing part of the team, part of the group. His nature is solo and having to be his way to set up the group that would do things, to go things, to inspire the group, to instigate people, to go there, to get the, te to get the teaching, to act on the teaching, to get the teaching to reach others. That, that would be the Mars to the, to, in the Sag in the 11th house. Who was point to get more and more people to know it, to make the show, to be here, to do there, to go to this, hit this convention, attack that group, attack, to get attacked, to just make the effort to be at this convention, to be at this special place, to get your point across. So he had an outward reaching energy that would go out, but it was so strong on his evaluations and his taking things in. I'm just... You know, when I'm trying to think of his memories and his stories, he talks about his, there's a family, there's associates. And talk, friends is an interesting concept. Friendship is an interesting context for Mars to be in there. It's more associates and people you do things with. So, okay. So he wants to project that the Jupiter's well aspect to it. It's, it rules that. So when there's an understanding, I'll go. If I have the teaching, I'll follow. I'll go where it needs to be, where people will listen, where I can inspire people. I would do that. Okay, I'm going to leave this here. Again, any of these things we can spend hours on, but let's just take a look at the Jupiter again. The Jupiter, trying Saturn, no bad problem. Sextiles to Jupiter. It's, we've touched on the square to Mercury and to, and to the Sun. It's in the eighth house in Libra. So understanding relationships. Sharing, understanding of sharing and relationships. Libra, ruled by Venus, understanding values of sharing and how it would be positive, how to make it positive, how to teach about it, how to understand it. But it's in the eighth house of it, sharing and trust, understanding how people trust each other or don't trust each other and the implications of how to improve your life and your marriages around trust. What's well, interesting, he had a marriage that was and in the and, 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 and lover are the two things. And he's counseling people about trust. There was a bit of a conflict here about his understanding. There was an ongoing um, puzzle. This puzzle would fuel his need to understand or to evaluate and to make it better. So even though he had his vulnerability, it would drive him to be better. But he still had his conflicts and his struggle with his understanding. On a personal level, living up, to practicing what one preaches, living up to what one knows, as opposed to living the way one has to live. So he would have to struggle with the understandings of others, with what who was doing what for money, what co what companies were doing this, who people was going which way, and he'd be trying to make things go his way, and the system was not always working in his way. He did okay, but it was like he had his own special way to work. Um, he would make a lot of strong impressions on a lot of people. And not all that Mars and Jupiter up high would come down to settle into the sun and would come down to affect him. So he got more than abundance of praise. And his understanding did affect a lot of people, but it was still, there was always a struggle because when his books went out, they were controversial or challenging, but so insightful, almost too much. And there'd be more demands made on him that he could ever live up to. Okay, the Jupiter to the Mercury and to the, to the Venus, not to the Mercury, Jupiter squares the Venus that exaggerates the values and the emotions, exaggerates, challenges the sun, will take on everything. And then how do you live up to everything? How do you try and help everybody? He could get burned out really easily. 
but he would come up and try and help, try and help. So certainly he believed what he was doing was helping people. There was just some challenges of conscience within this. Okay. What time? Yeah. Okay, good. So in the Saturn aspects, it's an important thing. Saturn is an Aquarius, it rules Aquarius. It's a it's in his first house, which is Aquarius rising. So it's in the first house, it's ruling that house. He identifies to it, so there's a strong identification to father, to accomplishment, to work, to achievement, to respect, to having the to having the PhD, to having his degree, to being the established person, to having work, and being responsible. Okay, to listening, and to listening. So listening, he responds very well, but he's going to do it in a formal, structured way. You're going to meet him in his office. It's not the person you're going to meet in the coffee shop. Okay, to be around work. So on a personal level, he's serious, inhibited, cautious, strategic. His identity is very cautious and strategic. Okay, his home and nature is too, but to put out, it would make him a little bit more reserved or shy, shyer when he was younger and much more practical, ambitious in a way, but it's not it's more defensive and not wanting to be embarrassed or wanting to be not wanting to be put in places where he's disrupted. He's going to want to achieve something. He's going to identify to the work or the goals to achieve things. So his discipline here, he has his discipline, his personal discipline. Again, this personal discipline that he has would make him be able to be controlled. It doesn't make him easier to reach. He could solve everyone else's problems, but who would he go to ask for advice from? Not likely. Okay, so um, his Saturn, it's really there's only, there's a trine to Jupiter, that's nice thing, trying to his understanding, sextile to Mars, he's able to be successful, work a business, is okay. It's square the midheaven, so you, there is a need to work hard to accomplish things. It's again, ties up to ambition and working, being disciplined, but it squares his moon and his Pluto. So it squares his moon and it's squared by Pluto. So. That a square is when he's crazy. I'm just one. Can I ever live strong? I have to control my feelings. I have to control my home. I have to have it there. It needs to be there, but I have to have it there. And have to, he could get really restricted if he were home too much. So he had his work that took him out. That's talking to other people, talking to all different relationships. And he's going home. So home was the same and controlled. His relations were better, but he had to keep a lid on her, controlled on it. And Pluto squares is ascendant. So this Pluto is the harshness. That's a harsh aspect. Pluto squares Saturn. There's a fear with father, a fear of authority, confrontation. I have to be in control. I can't let go of control or people are controlling me. Who's in control? Who's not? What's true? What's not? And it's coming from his house of knowledge. What's true? What's not? Can I live up to this? Can I do this? So he was driven to get his education, but he was driven to get his education because he had something else to say. Okay. So interesting, these two sides of him, just like the seesaw, again, he has this really harsh, disciplined, defined, stubborn, fixed side, and he has his Neptune square, and he has this other side that's very really escape and evasive from it. But they're interwoven, affecting each other, making him work all the harder, making him be very dedicated. And, um, but his ability to relax, if it wasn't coming at home, he would be able to relax. That works, he had someone who Loved to have been appreciated in both places, which kept him pumped up enough to keep doing all the work. Okay, what time is? Yeah, I want to spend a bit of time in the angle, so I'm not going to go too much further on, the, on these ones. I mean, it's easy to spend four or five hours on someone's chart just going through these steps, but I try and do within a couple hours, which is our focus time, so we get a general idea. So you see. The connections we've already hit on the main processing way of them that was so insightful around this. I had to work on this. My chart's more third house. I don't have anything on the seventh house, so I'm more the teacher. I had to really work to be a consultant. He's more the consultant that had to work to be the teacher. But we use a bit of both, but um, I think the problem was he became more successful than he expected to be, or he was going for it, but the demands of it, everybody's demands on him for the name of success, for making it go, 
would train on him and have difficulty for him personally. And when he had to put up with people he didn't want to put up with, he had great difficulty with that. He would have trouble. He could be in a place he was sure he would maintain his reserve and his concern. So he could be in places he didn't want to be, but he really wouldn't want to be there long. Okay, Uranus, the planet of excitement and shock in the seventh house, implying an unstable, unstable or disruptive or innovative relationships. It's in Leo. It's just out of orbit. It's 11 degrees from the sun, but they kind of work together. The Uranus in the seventh, the unconventional relationship, unconventional marriage. Well, he had a totally conventional, he married someone, he had the kids, it was fixed and stable. That was all very fixed and stable until he died. But that he had a breakaway side, that there was another side to that. It was the Uranus to the moon, the Uranus about relationships squared his moon. So he had the affair. So he had his wife and kids in one place, he had the affair in the other. How could these two, two worlds meet? But he would be between the two, and there would be some anxiety within himself around that. No one might be noticing. But it's certainly there. It's trying his Mars. So, like, it's above the horizon and reacting. So he reacts independently. He got so much excitement coming from other people and responding excitement, but still um, his outer reactions, they didn't necessarily make him feel more secure. The Uranus in the seventh house, as he responds to it, he sees a shock, he sees what could shock and what could disturb it. And he's living in a way that is potentially a conflict of interest. And these shocks are there. He had it working fine, but the more people that would come in, the more people make demands on him, the more this would affect his home and his basic feelings. 